previously on Homeless. Whoa. And they just came in with truckloads and after truckloads after like 10 o'clock at night. Your tent is the closest. Where are you thinking, my God, you're going to knock my tent oh. over? I stayed where I was at so that way you didn't have to destroy my tent. With you in it? With me in it. I'm always ready to die. Can you take my picture now? Yeah, this bitch. What are you talking about? I'm quitting this bitch. Hey, hey, hey. recording this shit. Hey, hey, hey. This is the line for me. This is the only thing that I got. There might be programs out there that might help me, but some of the stuff I got to do on my own. I got this paint set and I wanted to see if Christy wanted it. Uh, I haven't heard anybody lately say that they wanted to get out of here. Like people that are here are people that are trying to get out of here. So you're not really in like company? No. Yeah. Not yet. I'm still in Chihuahua's family. I'm in a... I'm just gonna give her a ride. Returning to the camp on March 5th, while speaking with some other volunteers near the camp entrance, we heard a yell from inside one of the tents. Emerging from Christie's was Christie shaken and walking toward us. She shared quietly that she'd just been hit. Soon, a man emerged from Christie's tent, apparently under the influence of some drug and anger. In front of us, he approached and admonished Christie, threatening her. Soon he left. I offered to drive Christie away from there, which this man wouldn't like one bit. As we gathered her things and walked from my car, he followed right behind us. Let's go. Yo, get your ass down, boy. You play that police ass shit with me again, I promise you, you won't make it out this block. Try me. You are him. You want to ride him, get in your car. I'm telling you, When I first got up here, I mean, like. I got introduced to prostitution. The man that I've been married to for the last 10 years ended up to be my king. Like, after that, I mean, it just went crazy after that. So, getting hit on and getting yelled at and degraded and all this other shit kind of becomes a normal. Once I got introduced to drugs, when I was 18 and came up here, I mean, it was over with. Crack cocaine was very popular back then, and it was a norm for everybody to do it. So, I, I guess in a way I felt like I fit in, but I knew I didn't fit in when he would always hit me or degrade me and stuff like that. Like, I see my mom and dad go through that shit their whole entire marriage, but that is more like they was in love with each other. They couldn't be without each other, and they stayed with each other until they died. Like. I don't, I don't know. I, it's just something's different about it. So, but I guess in my situation, being hit by a man or being, I don't talk crazy to, I guess, downgraded by these men, it really don't bother me. It, in a way it does, but in a way it doesn't because I know I'm a better person than that. I know that all that shit that's coming out of that man's mouth is not true. I know all that. So, I mean, to let that get the best of me is not a, that. And I'm a veteran, too. Like, I take out men on a daily basis. So, it was like, man, this is nothing. I guess what they say, looking for love in all the wrong places. Simply. Ain't no reason why somebody should be first meeting and decide they want to be together 
in a fucking tent. That does not make no sense to me. Not at all. This is where it went bad. Two days ago, I had walked into his tent and he had another bitch tied to his bed. Tied up like this with her wrist and by her ankles for stealing some shit out of his tent. And what, sh what, it's, not, it's, I mean, I understand the stealing part and how people should be punished like that. I know in other countries, they cut off your hands and fingers for stealing from people. But to do that and knowing that she only took your deodorant and your cologne, it's just pure humiliation and torture. It is. And to have all these people steady come inside of your tent and buy drugs from you and buy drugs from you while this woman is laying on the bed, I don't understand. What was she doing? Just laying there? Laying there crying. Like, that's just crazy as hell. Like, I don't understand that at all. You should not be able to have no choice over whose life gets taken and who survives. No. That don't make sense. And for people to allow him that much pull to control people's lives is fucked up. People like that need to be locked up. Does he have pull because he's the dealer or because people are afraid of him because he's intimidating yeah that and he's high ranked uh vice lord so why do you stay there because i have nowhere else to go i mean like i don't have i mean you talk about not wanting to go to a shelter because of the trauma but my gosh it's it doesn't it wouldn't a shelter be safer mm-hmm in, I guess in a way, yeah, but in a way, I'm still going through the same shit at the shelter. I don't know. Only thing is, no you men. don't see the drug use. No, but it, the men, you know, there's no, there's no vice lords in the women's shelter. No, because, right, but all women's shelters are hard to get into. Or it's just all women. Those is hard to get into. Because they'd be so booked already. People, people go into lotteries and shit like that, like the beginning of the year I know in some shelters you go in uh, January and they do a lot of redrawings and that covers you for six months see I'm not trying to go to a shelter and stay there one night and then the next night I have to find another shelter that's that's crazy that don't make no sense to me I'd rather sleep outside and I have sleeping outside is not a problem to me at all Winter does not bother me. I mean, my hands get a little cold sometimes, but that's about it. I can withstand, withstand the cold dish, the hot dish. It's ain't nothing. It's the aloneness I don't like. I'm always alone. Then I feel depressed. I kind of think that's why I put myself in these type of situations. I go around people like that. I stay in tense, period, because... Uh, it feels like family, like a community. <laughs> After a while, shit, even them turn on you. Family and a community. Clearly. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just, I'm kind of all fucked up in the head right now because now I feel like I'm fucking alone again. The same place I started off to begin with. What's your dream? What's your hope to get back on your feet? How would you do it? Mm, get up off the city. Get out of the city? Yeah. And go where? I don't know. I was thinking about going back to oh. Sioux Falls, South Dakota. It's my best friend's still down there. She has her own house and everything. And, oh, she's been wanting me to come down there. She don't do drugs, she don't drink or nothing. She wants me, she wants to see me get myself back on the right track. What's stopping you from going there? Um, money, uh, no place to go. I mean, I understand I can go to her house, but you know how, how, how if, I don't know if you know, but it's a type of feeling you get when you go to somebody's house and stay. Even though they open their arms, just knowing that you're staying there for free and you try to give money and food and they won't accept like that, that just feels wrong to me. Um, I mean, whether or not you open up your arms or not and say, well, here, come here, like, that just don't, it doesn't sit well with me. I mean, I know I would.
would do the same too, but... Does it sit so bad that it would keep you from going there rather than... Not really, no. I mean, it's just more of the funds. Like, I know that I have money and nothing like that, but... I'm just sick of always giving up my money. Yeah, what's stopping you from taking a bus down there? Mm. Uh, right now it's Saturday and buses only run on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So that stopped me. And who knows, we could get to Tuesday and what if I'm not here? What if I don't have the money? What if I'm dead? You don't have the money? I do. I, well, I have the money now, but I can't leave now. Well, it sounds like you have it out. Yeah. If you're if you're willing to take the take the jump. Yeah. Just, I don't I don't know how I feel about living in South Dakota. Being that close to the reservation reservation is not where I want to be. No, but it, you know we we gotta do the best we can with what we got. Yeah. And. Um, if you have a safe place to go down there, you can always come back here. But it sounds like a step up to me. Anything would be a step up, mm -hmm. Christy. Yeah. And that lack of enthusiasm you feel, I guess, maybe come over you. That maybe it's fear. Because it's like, oh, that's getting real. To go out to South Dakota. But I don't know. Maybe that's what's keeping you from being able to get back on your feet. That fear. Fear of what? I don't know. Being on my own? Fear of, fear of stepping out and living. Like, having to deal with the things that maybe you're trying to not deal with now. I've seen that before. I've seen that in this camp. People want to stay there because to step out of that camp, even if they have the option to, it's hard because then they have to deal with, say, they might have legal issues or they have kids and they're worried about trying to rebuild that relationship or mm -hmm. whatever. They're afraid to try because they're afraid to fail. Mm -hmm. But all those fears got to be overcome. Otherwise, you stay in that tent and you take that abuse. And that scares me. And he's not even after me. Sad. There's a much better life out there yeah, for you. I You're walking with a purpose this morning, King. I think I walk with a purpose every morning. I try to feel my soul sometimes, but I think I'll loud today. And other days, you're not up before noon, and now it's like 11, and you're up and at him. And I woke up two, two noons ago. Oh, you've been up since? Yeah, I, I look good. Huh? I don't look like... No, you don't. Yeah. I'm walking the circus, so I got an incident I don't feel like dealing with right now. You what? I'm walking in circles because I got an incident I don't feel like dealing with right now. So they're talking about it? I don't care about talking about it. The part of handling it. I'll show it to you. See, sometimes when you be in a blizzard, in a tent, you've been in there for so long, you gotta piss, you know what I'm saying? 
But you know what I'm saying? You want to piss in your piss cup. And it was snowing hell. You seen that snow how that was coming down, bro? Ain't never seen so much snow fall so quick. So I had a big polar pop cup. You know what I'm saying? Big goat cups. The biggest one. Thought about that bit right outside my door. I guess you know. How ironic is that? That bit landed in the fucking plastic thing, bro. It landed in the plastic thing, bro. Spilled in there. Oh, in that tray. Yeah. So that's that's piss. That's ice piss. Yeah, but it was in a big ass cup. And spilled in there. I thought that shit was funny and a joke. Hey, man, you fuck with my life, bro. I don't play no games, man. Mind your fucking business. I ah, shit, man. I told you, man. You that fuck ass shit with that fuck ass bitch. Y'all think y'all playing rescue rangers and helping somebody? Fuck them. Yeah, Say the fuck out my business, bro. I just gave her. You, I just gave her a ride. That's rolling. all. Tell you, bro. I wasn't taking this. I just giving a ride. I've given. I've given no, you. Man, I give you a ride. It's beyond that, man. It's beyond that. I didn't know. You didn't know. I thought I'm telling you. I'm saying, man, the bitch was on some fuck ass shit. Ooh. Fucking Chrissy, dumbass. Fuck ass, police ass shit. I didn't get no one involved. I just gave her a ride. That's all. I'm not taking sides. Ain't about no sides, bro. Straight up. This shit that you don't know. I understand. That you don't see, and I'm telling you, motherfuckers in the cage. I I get that. I I I'm not taking a side. I, I get that, bro. I understand you trying to do something that's the kindness of your heart. I get that, bro. But I'm telling you. Okay. I know what the fuck I know. Okay. I'm both of you. I don't. All right. I'm here to listen. Alright, alright. Trying to find a motherfucking way. I'm finna scoop that up. You know what I'm saying? This is not real solid froze. You know what I'm saying? It's slushy. Yeah, it's you know, good like to get slushy. rid of it now before it melts. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Or it'll pour into your tent. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna miss you for the rest of that. Well, I'm about to get a body up. How do you deal um, with the drama around here? You. Don't. I mean, I mean this, you know this, this confrontation, with and me, people are so emotional. With me, I learned how to block certain things that's irrelevant, that ain't harming me, ain't physically hurting me, or ruining my peace of mind. And my peace of mind is what I make. I can sleep through World War Three. You know what I'm saying? As long as Jesus ain't calling, do you, nothing. Do you ever... I don't know, when you see shit go down between people, and it's, and it's getting really threatening... You have no idea, bro. I'm, no, I I'm, don't. I saw it Saturday and it freaked me out. That's nothing. Go that way. <laughs> All right, well, hey, you know what? You said you didn't want to deal with that situation, but you dealt with it, now it's done. Yeah, I'm glad you came. You really inspired me. I wouldn't have been able to uh, figure out that that shit was going to melt. I would have thought stupid like it was going to freeze more. It, it froze, yeah, but no later this week that. it'll probably melt, so... Yeah. An hour on this right here. What's that? Cleaning? Yeah. If you're gonna be in um, the city for yeah. um, a few hours, yeah. yeah. In an hour, I'll be on Dunwoody and Hennepin, right there by Walker Garden. You can't miss me. What are you? I'll be flying my sign. All right. Don't highlight me over there. How you gonna get over there? I got my car. You got your car? Yeah. What's up, babe? Hi, Breezy. Like, I was thinking, they filled this place up with the max snow, the rest of the time it's snowing. Like, let's say they just fill that all the way up to where it's coming all the way and stacked up another layer on top. That shit melts. This is gonna be a lake. It already started. You have an ice rink over there. Damn, you guys could go ice skating, play hockey. Fuck that. We're gonna be frozen in that bitch.